So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is a live stream with live peoples. Um, and I'm working in my Colin Thompson Fantastic colour book. Um, I haven't worked in this for a while um, and then I came across this page that I'd started. Because what I've been trying to do is to put little, tick little stickers at the top on the back of pages that I've started and that need finishing and at the side I've put a little ticket of pages I finished and there seems to be only two or three pages finished in lots of colour books so if I look at the top here I know that you know I really have to make a stand with these but this was um, some of them are in Derwent ink tents and some are in Derwent watercolours and I can't at the moment work in those mediums and with those pencils but I can use my pastels so this is one that I started in very light pastel colours in my vintage original set and I thought well I'm going to carry on with these so um, I've had a bit of a play and I think really the firm taper point colour shapers are the best for colour books the soft ones are quite nice if you're going to do some other work but we really need to work this pastel colour into a page because it's very shiny and it's not got a tooth whereas when you're working um, on pastel paper it's almost like um, sandpaper you've got lots of tooth to build your layers up here we don't have that luxury so we need to really get that colour in and the firm uh, colour shapers tend to kind of do that so that works quite well the other way to do it is to just use a damp brush so, and that be then becomes a watercolour and then you can kind of very carefully with a, just a damp brush manipulate the colour um, and I'll probably start another page and do that in here because I like working that way as well but these colours are so very soft um, that I'm actually leaving it as a, a as a pastel, I think. But the the, the firmer the firm uh, colour shapers seem to kind of, without a lot of effort, really really grind that colour into these these pages. So that's what we want. Um, so there's a little bit of a door there so we could put a bit of a dark door now since I've got this vintage set I've actually found another one second hand it isn't the full set it was only 60 but there's another 60 colors um, but they're very 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 crumbly they're a lot softer and crumblier and paler than the new Derwent pastels that you can buy now which have uh, the tin has a picture of a lion on the front and apologies for earlier I kept calling it a tiger but it is in fact a lion so if we want to have a bit of a bit of more shadow into there we kind of have to kind of really smush that about but that's given just a little bit of colour and I like these gorgeous pastel pale colours. It's kind of confusing because pastel colours are normally pale colours, but pastel colours nowadays, of course, is pencil pastel, so it's it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so that seems to be a bookshelf and a seat um, and a window. So we've got a window, but I think we're going to put blue outside that window. Now I don't have sharp points on my pencils. So I may have to start doing that, um, but when I do that, I'm going to be taking the, the sharp, I sharpen the pencils with wood, and uh, there's a couple of videos that I've done, but I'm probably going to do another one of sharpening a lot, and bear with me, I'll find the actual pencil. Um, it wasn't wasn't ivory black, but what I do is I take the wood off and I leave the rough end. But if I wanted a point, there isn't really much much reason to do that with these because they're very soft. But what I might do is if you scrape 
with a blade to a point and keep the dust. If you put a tiny drop of water in there, it becomes a watercolour. And of course, these are almost pure pigment, so they're very high quality watercolours. Uh, and again, that's why when you touch a drop of water instead of blending with a blending tool, you get a lovely watercolour effect because these colours are the nearest to pure pigment you can get. And of course, in all art products, the nearest, highest quality pigment are the most expensive because they've got more pigment in them. So you're actually getting two, two good quality products if you want to carefully use them as a watercolour as well. Um, so I'm just having a bit of a look in here and oh, again now I only have two colour shapers so because at the moment this is apart from my my UG um, drawing tablet I don't have another means of colouring so I probably will invest in some pastel pencil paper and um, and uh, some, some, some other colour shapers because this is going to be the only medium that I can use because there really is just the tiniest, tiniest amount of, of pressure and I'm only using two fingers because my thumb is incapacitated at the moment um, and if I start to use it, it causes a lot of problems so this is wonderful because I can have a bit of a play um, and because these are so soft and crumbly, as as the other ones are as well, I'm just going to kind of imply there is a bit. Um, and this is a very, very small, squidgy colour shaper. Um, so it's quite good to get into these really tiny spaces. I just want to have a little bit of colour in here. Now, I know that's an onion, but I have no idea what that is, unless it's an orange. But what we have to do sometimes with this book is read the actual titles, because on each page is a clue to what the creatures and the things are. So we had, um, these are all vegetables. So if they're all vegetables, then we know that that's what that would be an onion rather than a tennis ball um, and then some were all sports and so we know that it, one was a tennis ball um, I'm not quite sure what's going on here these are just like little houses he almost looks like an orange almost looks like an orange um, really doesn't know what it is so I, I might just do him an orange colour I think but I like the fact that we can make up lots of things. Um, if you made this into a watercolour, yes. Um, DD says, uh, yes. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pan out and I'll do one. Oh, it's very dark. Would you put the other? That's why it's dark, darling. Could you put the light on for me? Thank you. Yes, bit of an idiot. I must have started recording without that. If I pan out a second, I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. Um, having said that, I've got six watercolours. You only need six to make thousands of colours. Um, you only need six colours. But the pastels are easy for me to use because I can't really mix colours anymore. Um, and I can't really hold a paintbrush, but I have mine on here. Uh, but you only need a card yellow um, and um, a lemon yellow, a very cold yellow and a warm yellow. You want Elysium Crimson, which is a pinky red. Um, and you need a cadmium red, which is a, a cold orangey red. You need um, a French ultramarine, which is a purpley blue and you need a cerulean blue which is a very cold blue um, and these actual colours here are Cotman what was left of a tube and I made 630 colours from these three colours 
um, actually I used printer inks I used the printer inks and I got 630 some just from three colours the only difficulty is making French ultramarine you can ma make all other colours but you cannot get a good purple because French ultramarine is quite difficult to make so I would do two yellows two blues and two reds the only reason these are in here is because they are um, they were in the set so I put them in there but that's all you really need you need um, and it did cost, cost me a little bit because I made a mistake with the price but uh, Cotman uh, do um, a student grade and those tubes of paint are still fantastic and I paid 99p for each one and I think actually that's the I made all these colours from three it's not that one I knew it wouldn't be that one <laughs> I haven't done much in Animorphia um, with the Kirby Roseanne but if I look at this one very quickly all those colours was made from three Cotman tubes of paint a Cerulean blue um, and I made the reds the dark the, 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 the warm cadmium red I made that with adding making an orange and then adding orange to the Elysian crimson and that gives you a cad red um, all those greens were made from three colours oh, the only one that you can't get is the purples they're not really nice and warm purples not vivid purples they're dull purples um, but you can just buy three colours as long as it's the right three cobalt blue isn't cool enough it's got to be cerulean blue cerulean blue has to be the blue because that gives you the brightest greens but um, if you really want just three if you want to tax yourself but I would say six so if you're looking at watercolors or anything if you find um, a, a pinky red and a cold red if you find um, a, a, a warm purpley blue and a cold blue and a warm yellow and a cold yellow a lemon yellow if you find a set with those six colors in you can guarantee it's a decent set so let me ha show you what I mean so all these colors could be could be watercolors but let's have a look at the pastels here these are called these are pastel pencils but they're not pastel shades um, so if we look at we have a look at one to, to, to sharpen well we've got the raspberry color we've got the raspberry and we've got this color and we've got I think one of the yellows the deep cadmium yellow so we'll do this really quickly now I do have the Derwent sharpening guard but again I've been doing this since I was 16 this is the way you sharp and you may not want to sharpen your other pencils like this but you must sharpen your pastels with this if you put this in a machine it will disintegrate because you're going to twist it into oblivion so what I do is I have a bit of paper but it depends on what color your pastels are if you have the Derwent vibrant colors you get vibrant watercolors if you have my beautiful pastel pale colors you get pale colors um, I'm just looking for a piece of paper just bear me two seconds I've got too many out now I would never put this on here I would put it on here because it's not going to move but I'm just doing it so you can see the pencil so I use this as a guide and I start taking the wood off and so I'm using a very very not digging in the blades almost flat and you're sliding across now I have a lot of problems with my thumb and I'm taking wood off I'm not touching the strip of color at all and that's for watercolors Inktense, pencils, 
uh, drawing pencils, sketching pencils, colouring in pencils, the colour soft. This is for any pencil that you don't you want to get the most out of. So as you can see, I'm going to end up with a big fat and you turn this as well. This is a little bit difficult for me at the moment, but I hope we'll just keep going. Now I would suggest you use a Stanley knife because they're very sharp, but you can retract the blade. Especially if you've got kiddie winkles. It's perfect because they can throw that knife about. Mine used to throw my knife about all the time. And they're not going to cut themselves. So if you can see there, I've got there's a tight Yorkshire lass. Now, your colours wouldn't be soft colours because you can't buy these soft colours anymore. So if you wanted to do this with the Derwents, the Derwent colours is what you would get. So if you look on the Derwent website or any other, just Google it, you will get this 72 um, colour gu guide. So that is pure colour. So I have got here just wood. So I'm quite happy with that because I can work that I've got a point at that side and then when that goes dull I've got a point at that side. So I can work with that but say I didn't want to. And this is why I'm going to put them in my books. I didn't really want to waste another one but I will do. So then you want a point. So you now start to scratch colour. Now normally you do this on here and throw it away. This is what I do. And I would get a bigger one of these with lots of little kind of wells, a proper colour one. Oh, you see, I've used my thumb now, excuse me. I can use the thumb, but it's. Um, I want to cut the damn thing off after an hour. So, what we're doing now is just scraping carefully, turning the pencil around. And what you're doing is creating a point and this is how you sharpen any other pencil but the Derwent or not uh, not so much the ink tents but the Derwent watercolors but any pastel paper any pastel at all any watercolor now the better the pigment of the pencil the better this watercolor is going to be So if you did this to start with, now the thing with pastels is this point is never going to stay a point because it's a pastel. It's soft. The minute you draw a line with it, it's gone. It's blunt. Um, but if you probably have like two sets or two colours, a dark and a light, what you could do is keep one as a point and have another one. Right, so if you can see, that's now a point. And I'll show you next to one that's been sharpened in the uh, in the factory. I don't think that one's been used. So my point's going to be a lot better for a lot longer. But the beauty of this is, and of course the first thing you do is you put that in there. And I actually have a little pot. I must be a bit more organised. I did this yesterday, so I'll put that in there. And I actually, I did use the little brush. So this shows you how least water you need. So a little pot of water. And this is what I did yesterday. I had one little drop, I had two little drops, and I had three little drops. Actually, I think I might have four. This is cadmium yellow. 
This is a watercolour cadmium yellow. And I've only touched half of that. Uh, there we go. So that's a very bright, and my light's a little bit pants, I have to say. But that's, oh gosh, sorry about that. The light's gone really bad. So that is a pastel colour, and that's cadmium yellow. And that's dust, so I'm going to have to make that. So there was a lot more than in that one. So this one, so that's because that one's cadmium yellow. So that's going to dry now. And that's now a watercolour. So I've got a cadmium yellow in there, which is a gorgeous cadmium yellow. So you only get the colour of what what the colour of the pastel is, but that proves that that is extremely good quality um, pigment. Now the Derwents, there's a flesh colour and there's a couple of pinks um, and then there's some um, ivory colours, but a lot of them are vibrant. They're all vibrant colours. Mine are pastel colours, but you can't buy those anymore. So that now goes in there, so I have a sharp pencil in there, and I've got a watercolour. But that watercolour is, I would say, top of the range, because it's almost pure pigment, because it's come from a pastel. And you can't, you can't buy a watercolour, even the Winsor & Newton expensive ones that I have, they're, they're still not as good as that, because that's got less binder in it than a watercolour has. Because a watercolour tube has to have a binder in it to make it a watercolour tube paint. This hasn't got a binder in it, it's a dust. It's got a lot less binder in it. So they're very, very good quality. And the other thing is, these are actually light fast as well, and to get a light fast watercolour, they're expensive. So whatever colour pastels you're buying, you can make it into a watercolour. Now, I don't know whether I can get that to sit on a square, but I intend to, and I've got 60 and 36. Yes, have I got 60? No, I've got 72, and I've got 36, and then I've got the set of 72. And they're all going to be watercolours in my little book, and they're going to dry just like this one that I did yesterday. And this one was seal, and I love the seal because I used it for, and I know this has nothing to do with Colin Thompson, so apologies. I used it for here, and I sharpened the seal one. Did I, did I sharpen indigo? No, I didn't sharpen indigo. I sharpened seal. Bear with me. It's the only one I've sharpened. So I did this on yesterday's video. So this is called Seal P660, and it's what I used for the shadows here. But the beauty of turning it into a watercolour... And again, you know, it's, it's a gorgeous, rich, warm um, grey, is that you can actually then use a brush on it as well if you want to get some really dark shadows and that's what I used to go into here so you can have the reason I want them is the fact that I can use my pale ones so I've got 72 Derwent vibrant pastel colours um, and the same with these I mean these aren't soft colours these are professional pastels these will make a watercolour and these these are beautiful. These aren't these aren't. Um, I would say this is almost a cad red, poppy red. Does that make sense to everybody? So you want a bright red, 
and again I don't think you can get much brighter than poppy red there is a poppy red in one of them um, this is De La Rowney let's make sure that's clean so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to take and again you can't get any purer than this and I'd forgotten at school that we, we made watercolours out of these but you know there you go so now I'm going to put probably three again here three drops of water If you can see it's mixing quite well that so that's poppy red so I think I probably need to make it a little bit thicker but I didn't but I know look at what I've used off the end of there hardly anything just the tiniest little bit off there but if you imagine doing that with all you pass oops and the other thing is I'm actually making it into a chalk it's a bit bitty that instead of making it fine like this I'm making it so it's more difficult for it to blend but you could make a little little paddle a little palette of color I'm going to put that away because I'm going to get it wet and this isn't a mixing brush it's just a little tiny brush this one So you make it as watery or as thick as you want. That's a pretty nice red. That's poppy red. And you can keep going to get it into a, into a wash. Probably want to mix it a little bit better, but again, this is one, something I can't do because it makes my hands hurt. Um, but they are not pale colours. Um, there's a hooker's green somewhere, and then there's there's a Prussian blue. So let's have a look for a poppy red in the Derwents. Then, so again, these these are softer than the Derwent pest. Oh didn't put the top back on there these are softer but again you only need six just buy six watercolors you only need six watercolors the fun is making your own colors unless you're poorly like me and then of course mixing is a pain um shouldn't really be using that brush either so let's find a poppy red oh i did use the red didn't did i use the cadmium red which red did I use? Oh, I, I got it out, but I didn't use it. There's a raspberry, but there is actually a cad red. So, I don't think there's a poppy in this one. I would, actually, I would think... I would think raspberry is near poppy. Um, yeah, I would think that's nearer than a cadmium red. But we'll go for cadmium red. And actually, I don't need to sharpen this, but I will just take out a bit of that. So, this is cadmium red in the Derwent pencils and I'm going to actually try one of these pencils because I shouldn't shout my mouth off about one this is a red in a Conti Paris one um, so I better just try that one to make sure it's all pastel pencils and not just Derwent but you see I know that Derwent pastel pencils have got a good pigment I couldn't swear about all the others but if you've got a set of Derwent pencils so just make sure that's again that's another reason why I don't do watercolours anymore <laughs> so there we go so I haven't put as much water because I haven't so this is the Derwent pastel pencil cad red and that's more vibrant than the pastel. Sorry about the light, it's, it's dusk here now and the light's gone. So it's quite badly flickered actually, isn't it, that one? Push that away a little bit and 
let it stop the flicker. So, sorry about the light. Oh, I know why the light's bad. Sorry, I'm in a different place. So they're not bad. Um, but I would still buy, you know, But so if you wanted to have a go at watercolours, but you like pastels and pencils, then, you know, but they're, they're a little bit expensive to buy as a watercolour, but you saw how much I used. So if you wanted to sharpen every pencil, I'm going to actually do that because I actually love these colours. The problem is I'm too poorly to use them at the moment. Um, but they will be... You know, they're like this is just photocopy paper, but they are, and again, as near as damn it, uh, which one was it there? Was that one there? They are as near as damn it, the actual colour um, that you do. Let me just f move my blade out of the way. Let me find another one. So that's the pastel bit, and that's the watercolour bit, or was it there? And then we had a different one, didn't we? another one um, but let's just try it with this one this is the Paris Conti pastel now I didn't like these they're not in my set but you know it's a pencil it's a bright red color it says number three but doesn't have an doesn't have a name but Conti is supposed to have quite a good name so let's have a look but I would think because of the nature of pastel, it has to be a lot of pigment and a little bit of binder, just purely for the, na the, the, the nature of it. The softer the pastel, the more pigmented. So that's why these really soft pastels are very expensive. The little square hard ones are cheap. But I mean, you can make a watercolour out of the cheap pastel ones. Find my little little brush. Oh, if I just use that silly thumb. So again, I haven't put a lot of water because now if you've got asthma, you've got to be a bit careful. But I've just done that, and it all went in there. So again, oh, actually, it's turned out lovely. Look, it's a beautiful creamy watercolor. Is that? And that's the Conti ones. So that was a set. I don't know where they came from, uh, but that's that one. So yeah, there isn't as much water as in there. So we've got three different types of pastel. Uh, we've got a Conti pa a Conti pencil, the Derwent pastel pencil, and the Daily Rowney color poppy uh, uh, actual pastel. Um, so you can, if you've got the set of 12 of these, you've got these 12 vibrant colours. And I mean, these are really, really vibrant. There's two blues. I've just broken the green one, actually. But again, you see, I can put this into there and I can use it as a watercolour because it's just broken off. So I can now make that into a water. It's going to be dirty because it's in the bottom of there, but that will be a watercolour. They're a little bit harder, are the Conti ones, but you know, you've got pinks. And then what you can do is mix the colours together. As you put in the dust in, you mix the colours together. And you can get thousands of different colours. Especially when we've got a pink and a red um, and you've got the pale blue so you can mix all those colours with the greens you can mix all the colours with the oranges and the reds and get thousands of different combinations and they're all your tertiary colours they're all your colours that are in between so instead of 72 you know you want six colors that's all you need six colors but they have to be the right colors and there is a set that was a lot cheaper of Winsor and Newton professional watercolors and I didn't buy it I bought us it cost me twice as much 
because it didn't have cerulean blue in it and I couldn't get the brightest greens because it doesn't matter what greens you have if you do not have cerulean blue the brightest coolest blue you cannot get um, the brightest greens so if anybody's got any questions yeah the cheaper watercolour sets the book one says um, aren't very pigmented like the cheaper pastels um, but if you did, if you could only afford one or the other, but you really want to play with pastels, you can still get a little bit of watercolor out. Um, I mean, there's no reason why you can't then, if you don't have enough wells, you know, you've got you've got your yellow. I don't want to touch that yellow because it's cad and it's gorgeous. Um, and then touch a bit of that, and now you've got an orange. And then if you put a touch of that, you've got a light orange. I'm just going to take that red out of there. Um, so even with just these colours, and then we've got a touch of the, that grey in there. You know, you've got a brown. Because it's a grey, it's got blue in it, so you've got a, a nice brownie colour rather than a cold grey. So that you can even with just those few, so you could buy a set as long as the Derwent set of uh, the set of twenty four is probably the best, um, and then it's got th the reds you need. Um, not sure about the others, but again, you try just try or buy them individually. I I've bought six tubes of paint, six tubes of anything individually. I bought six Caran d'Ache near color twos. I bought French ultramarine. Cerulean blue, um, and I meant to do the 600 colours just with those six crayons, but I can't squish down with them, so I'll have to wait to do that. But I want to prove to people you don't have to buy hundreds of pounds worth of things. Um, so, did that answer your question? <laughs> Is that okay? But I would say the best thing to do is before I buy anything, I watch YouTube videos till they come out of my ears. Um, I watch different ones, I watch different people, um, and I get a feel for how good they are. I mean, I watch some people talk about colour and I cringe. I watch some people go on and they've got hundreds of thousands of people watching them and they don't know the first thing about colour mixing. I just absolutely cringe. Um, but the best thing to do is to buy a little set and play because it's it's just easier that way so I actually think this is going to ma make a good set of watercolours as well especially if you can use the colours even if you scratched um, on a little bit of watercolour paper or sketchbook paper these colours I don't know if that would work actually let me have a think. If I got one free, because I did try to make some for the girls that won the book. That's what I was trying to say. Um, let me have a quick look in here. No, that's not it. Um, I should have some kicking about somewhere, because I do keep try to make these these books. Um, this is this is my that's my original book. Ah, here we are. Look, now this isn't the best paper. Um, so there's two ways of doing it. You can either scratch colour down, and again, you can tell with the others. Now I might not be able to do this with my thumb, but oh, that's not too bad. So there comes a point where there's just it's just going to be too dusty. just had a thought though I bet it works on other paper so I've got a bit of dust there I probably would make the puddles of color and then you can touch that and make it a watercolor so you can do it that way and I've done that in my little book somewhere I've got some um, what do they call them? 
I've forgotten what they call them now. Just bear with me. I think that's the wrong. Oh no, that's the right place. Uh, what do they call them? They call them um, ink tense blocks. And they're in mine, and they're a pastely kind of. They're a pastely kind of thing. Derwent blocks, ink tense blocks. They're in my little book of watercolors somewhere. They're my ink tense blocks there. So I've got 12, I think, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah. Oh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I've got 14 ink tense blocks. And I've got some gorgeous colours. Again, no good for a big thing, but colour page or a little bit of a a little bit of a watercolour the it's perfect. And of course the ink tense blocks stay at home. That's so I love my little book. Has anybody got any questions? Um now it's a bit of a faff doing that, but you know, most most frugal art people are willing to faff about a little bit to save pennies. And it's the difference between having and having not, especially with me. It's a it's a case of do I want it or do I not want it? And I have to make it. So um so as I say, you know, I now have all these colours all these beautiful colours and these are more vibrant but as I say this is a vintage set that you cannot buy anymore um, so and I must have had them 18 years and the second set I bought second hand all the tops are cracking off but as I said I'm not bothered about that it's this end that I'm bothered about and if one one was broken, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Uh, this is this is French ultramarine bold, um, and this is going to be. I'm just going to scratch a little bit. This is going to be the most wonderful colour. I won't be using it in my um, Colin Thompson. Oops, and you stuck that in there then. Never ever stick that in water, because you will completely ruin it. If you want to use it as a watercolour, scratch it down. So I use it as a watercolour in here. I've used it as a watercolour. The, those pest, pestles. <laughs> pestles. Pestle pestles. I used them in here like that. There is a video. As I say, it's not very good. But what I did is I scratched a little bit of colour with the pastel pencil. And then I got a little brush. I actually got a rigger, because you do need a rigger for that. And I've popped all my riggers away. So you want a little rigger brush. Um, and I got this, and I let's see if I can find something that's not set. Do one here. I started this the other day. I've got any flowers? I don't seem to got any flowers. Hmm. Oh, how awkward. I don't really want a bright blue house. Um, bear with me two seconds. Ow. I just have such difficulty picking things up. Let me have a look for the red. I think I'm going to use the Crimson Lake. Oh, it's a bit pink, is that? Let me have a look at this one. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of that in there. Now this is the old set. It's very crumbly. And then a rigger twisted on baby, so it's just damp. <laughs> Blow the excess dust off, but there's not a lot. And then we just so this is using them as a watercolor, and you don't have to blend. Technically, what you're doing is blending. Sorry about the light. You're blending with your brush. And the beauty of that is, it's not a pastel anymore. It's a watercolor. So there's a video of how I did this particular page and I apologise for the, the dark colour because I changed the colour to get the green and it made this yellow. But it showed how a little bit of colour and then manipulated it with a damp brush. 
So that was that was quite good because then you don't have to bother with the blender and it all instantly becomes a watercolour. But you have the most fabulous vibrant colors on the planet because why have I got a 54 in a 15 <laughs> I don't know I don't know um, so did that did that make any sense so I actually use them as a watercolor I set them and the minute they're set they don't become a watercolor anymore um, but I think I did that in part one so this particular book, this Daydreams book, I will be using in this way because it's very quick. So there's no blending, there's no blending with anything. It's it's very similar to, you know, you pick a pencil, you put the colour down. Um, so I would do all these in Crimson Lake 15B and I will just take that and my damp brush and hope it's still damp enough and manipulate that colour and that has now become the watercolour but it's not dull it's not pale if I used the F in this set these are very pale very pale but I'm using the B which is the bold colour the vibrant colour And I like working that way because, of course, it's now a watercolour. It's set. It's finished. It's done. It's very quick. I think it took me an hour and a bit to do this page. It didn't take very long at all. And yet, i still got some quite nice effects. Yeah, it's not like the Hagrid's page because that took nine hours almost. But, you know, this, this isn't... This is a blended page. This one took a little while because this was blended. But the minute you add water to these pastels, these two are now watercolour because I've blended them with water. I've just put a little bit of water over the top. So it's from a pastel, it's become a watercolour. Um, but as I say, they are fabulous, fabulous colours. Has anybody got any questions? <laughs> a bit of a rabbit trail there. So to answer your question, uh, Dee Dee, if you bought if you bought pastels, as in these, you'd have to have a, they're not very well pointed. So if you were using them in a colour book, you couldn't use them with anything with any detail unless you used a fine brush. But the pastels, um, especially the Derwent ones and the uh, Faber Castell, those apparently are very similar in 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 um in value and uh, and in for using them they're very similar i think the colors will be slightly different and the price range is slightly different but apart from that uh, the light fastness um the opacity so if you're working over a dark color if you're blending they're very very similar according to mr mr what's it on the youtube video they're very similar to um, Faber Castells, so those particular those two sets probably will work the same. If the pigments are the same, and the, I think the pigments have to be fairly similar to get fairly similar results. Um, but we tried the Conti one, and it wasn't far out. So again, if it's a pastel, it has a lot of pigment and a little binder. The binder in here is not as strong as the binder in a watercolour. So it's pretty pure pigment in here. It's not bad. Um, now there's a cheaper set. Um, oh, I forgot what you called it now. And they were very hard. So they will have a more of a binder, but they were half the price. But again, if you can scrape it into a dust very carefully, if you've got asthma, into a little dish and add water, you'll have a watercolour. But your pastel blending will not be as good because they weren't as good as these um, and the other four. I think they did five altogether. Um, but, you know, 
this set is a pretty decent set. I'm going to put those in that set, and that's this is the new set. As a when you look at it, it's a lion. There's 72, um, which is three sleeves, uh, but they are beautiful, vibrant colours, and you can get a good point on them as well. But I personally leave them because they're so soft. There's not much point. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Has anybody got any questions? about um, I'm just worried to think that I've knocked that no nope, I haven't it seems to be there so sorry about that little <laughs> little rant <laughs> so I'm going back to my soft pencils in that colour book and I'll put that one away uh, but because I started with my very pale uh, portrait set which is these you know that's burnt umber but it's the palest burnt umber I've ever seen so again if you buy a pale set of pastels you will get a pale set of colours um, so that's geranium lake 15 and that's ultramarine blue which is a very vibrant blue so I, ha I can't imagine how many colours I've got now, but I'm still looking for other colours because I do like this particular set. So has anybody got any more qual... Qu oh, sorry, I can't speak. Anybody got any questions? Um, but we did colour theory when we did graphic design in the in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, and then when I did my degree about five years ago, I actually got a distinction, I think, in my in my colour theory. So, uh, which wasn't bad with somebody with a broken, a broken elbow, <laughs> a broken elbow. And a 54 burnt umber. So I love these colours, um, and I like the pale ones as well. So this, again, mine, are, they're so old, they're cracking, but does it matter that that little bit's coming off? It doesn't matter to me, because the pencils have only been used by my daughter. And I feel terribly ashamed that I've had them all this time and didn't know just how lovely they were. So again, I want to make sure that my blending tool is clean. So we went on a bit of a rant there. <laughs> But I hope everybody realised that, you know, uh, and I don't think I'm the only person that can do that, you know, I'm not a genius. I've just devised this way because I cannot now colour in with all my other supplies. Uh, so luckily one daughter loves to do a lot of colouring in, oh, it's because I've been using this thumb, and the other one is at university studying um, illustration and animation. So luckily I've been able to give my things to somebody else to use. And again, I love the fact that you can use an eraser. Completely take that out. <laughs> so did I lift that up or did I drop that down? Now the colour doesn't seem too bad because it's not on pastel paper. So if I zoom in a bit. As you say, I'd, I was thinking about doing my teaching, uh, my teaching degree. You can do a, an extra year for a teaching degree, but I'm not sure I'd be able to do that in a wheelchair. That's going to be a bit whoopsie. Oops, I apologise about this. It's having a moment. I think that's the best we can get. So we just have a quick look at Sooty. Um, oopsie. See if we can pick that up there. If we can read that, it's normally quite good. Oh, 
it's just sorry it's the little I think the uh, the the, um, the the mouse pads going on the laptop so it jumps about a, a little bit too much for me so if we find this little man here we've done that little room we've done that room we've done his feet again I've just got to move that wet baby wipe otherwise I will be curling my pages um, and I've got to remember that I'm not using <laughs> a brush now I'm using a blender so the blender's quite clean um, again there's another little room there there's some odd shaped things going on here I'm going to turn that down there move that back so if anybody's got any questions pop them in caps Um, so we've got a little bathroom there, so again, you know, you've got some fairly pale colours going on. So if we do the walls, everything else could be white. Um, again, just blow that little bit of dust off, but we don't have much. And I think, as I say, I, I felt a bit kind of overwhelmed about doing this because I've made this up. People have used pastels, um, big pastels, but this is kind of my only way that I can kind of um, can colour. And so it's a bit scary if you do something and then somebody else does it and it doesn't work. Um, So I hope everybody can, you know, have a go. But I want to show people that you don't have to go out and spend a fortune. Um, you, know, you can buy the pastels. And I feel really guilty when people do, because I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. Sorry, darling. Okay. Right. So I'm going to waffle for about another five minutes. Um, because I'd forgotten, of course, I've been uh, summoned to go out to dinner. So um, I have to put my glad rags on. <laughs> so, um, I thought that was an ironing board. An ironing. It is an. It is um. Oh, it's not an ironing board. It's a airing cupboard. Because we had the header tank, and that's an airing cupboard. Now ours were bright. It was bright red, our ironing cupboard um, lag. Oh, it's like a big copper thing with it stores the hot water. But if you can lag them, we never did when we were little. Um, um, when my daddy was ill, when my mum died, uh, lots of people were taking things. So in the airing cupboard, there was shelves above. And in all the blankets and bedding, I hid all the china. And they must have had a leak and the guy that came to mend the leak pulled all the things and smashed all all ribbon plates and very very nice old things and everything got broken and the um, the Wedgwood black coffee pot which I have never seen one since disappeared um, it was about 14 inches high and it was a black Wedgwood um, which everybody thought that I'd imagined ever seeing one because I've never seen one since and nobody nobody else has either. So I'm going to do that bright red. Sorry about that. That was a bit of a nostalgic moment, that. Because, bless my daddy, he, it wasn't his fault. He was in Burma during the war and he came back quite ill and he drank lots and lots of times because he was only 18 when he went out there. So it wasn't his fault. Um, and he was quite ill and he came back. And I don't think everybody was really... Although they said they were lucky to come back. Uh, sometimes that wasn't the case. And so he was not a happy bunny. And of course, 
people used to go into the house and steal things. So my mum was quite a good collector of things, but of course everything got taken away, so we lost a lot of nice little trinkets and things that my girls quite like. I don't know what to do with that bathroom. It's a little bit small to be putting a bathroom in there. Just a tidgy bit small. Just a tidgy bit. I might make something... I might put a green, because we have greens and blues in bathrooms. Let's see if we can find a nice blue. This is a spectrum blue. And again, this is a B, so this is bold. Oh, sorry, this is D. Um, now, as I say, I got confused with this. I hope not to confuse everybody. There is a spectrum blue B, actually. Um, this vintage set, there was only 30 colours. but there were 90 in the set because every three colours had three shades um, and that's why I adore this set so I'm actually going a bit dark I've just realised I've got to be a bit careful I don't use the bold I only use that very pale set otherwise um, that will stick out like a sore thumb if I do it too much because he's very pale so actually I've just realised those two are quite quite dark but I might leave them they're not too bad they're not too bad um, so I think because I've got I've got x-rays and all sorts of things tomorrow I won't be able to stream I don't think because I won't get back in time until DD's on so if DD doesn't come on I'll stream but if DD normally does on a Wednesday um, I won't be doing tomorrow so hopefully I'll be able to do that on Friday. I might go through the colours and the differences and making them into watercolours. Um, I'm just going to do that last little bit here. Oopsie. Because that's a very strange face. Oops, there. It's a bit of a scary face, I think. So I'm going to use the chocolate again and the same when I'm doing oh, I don't know if I put that one in there but I have um, the same when I'm doing either blending with this or blending with a a, br a, wet, a damp brush I don't put colour all over and then you've got a little bit of manoeuvrability to create a bit of interest just by doing a few strokes it's not a dead colour must have taken that up so I can take that back down now. So this is quite well behaved, this this particular firm um, brush. And I say they are about ten pounds, but for goodness sake, don't pay that. Um, I'm gonna have to fish about for some I certainly didn't pay that. Um, and the only one I'm tempted to buy is this one it's a grey one but it's a wedge and that one is about £10 because it's it it will do reflections um, and as I say I want to get back into being a perfect back into being an artist again rather than just colouring in somebody else's work so I might I might invest in one of those but I'm definitely hoping to find some cheaper than that um, so for so thanks for stopping by guys I'm going to stop the video I'm not going to um, I'm not going to release the video because it was a lot of waffle. <laughs> so thanks for watching.